Hi, welcome to Bible Class with Mark and Julie here on the 24th of May. I think we worked out this is week 11. 10. 10 of doing this. I think so. 10. I and and uh, this series in First Peter will take us right up to Children's Day. Yes, we're doing Children's Day in case you haven't heard. And there'll be information going out to various people. Uh, how's your week been? Just the same. Just It's just the same now. I'm just like... Mm. Yeah. There's no boom, and there's no boom. It's just. Mm. I I'm still so ups and downs, even you know emotionally up and down. Uh, but it's yeah, your hormones. My, <laughs> it's, it's my it's my age. Uh, but Good my point. my my downs don't last very long. My ups are are more often than the downs. More upper. More more upper than downer downer, downer. and uh, sometimes I know I just have to take have to chill. Have to relax. Have to just do something that I enjoy doing. Um, my uh, lettuce. My lettuce are coming up. I'm yeah. actually enjoying being in the garden. My dad was a great gardener, but you know we never got, got into. Green it. fingers. Uh, no, I've got dirty fingers. Oh, that's quite lovely. <laughs> you should wash your hands for twenty seconds and sing Happy Birthday. I know. Uh, one of the highlights of the week was the Zoom call. I really enjoyed seeing you guys live and you just made me laugh. So thank you to Luke and Jessica, Cara and Ella, Matthew, David, Daniel, Joe, Eve, and of course Charlotte and Catherine. It was really good having you all there and it was a bit of fun. Especially when the dogs came. <laughs> You do realise next time all we'll have is dogs, dogs and, and cats cows. and uh, rabbits and whatever else. The patterns will take us out for two of the knocking parlour. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be so cool. Um, and the Friday Night Quiz, did you have a good time at it? Um, I, I hope that we're recording this beforehand. I hope I beat Luke. That is my, is that my goal. Ambi- That's my goal. I haven't beat him yet. Uh, so, uh, but uh, it's all in a bit of fun, and of course, we're recording beforehand. Uh, so we so, haven't done it yet. So we haven't done it yet. But that could be the answers, please. <laughs> send please? send us the answers because we haven't done it yet. Uh, but that I'm asking round Kenneth. three question two that was so hard. I'm round sixty three question ninety nine <laughs> that was. No, uh, now they think we're quit making it up. Yeah. Anyway, we have asked in the past few weeks for you to send in your tip of the week, and we have got one in. Uh, yep, Kenneth has sent us in a tip of the week, so sit down, relax, and listen to his tip of the week. Hello, I've been asked to give a tip, and I think my tip for lockdown would be keep active, keep your brain, your body, and your soul active. Thinking of different things you could do, different areas of life that you could concentrate on and, and try and keep active in, thinking of practical why not do something practical? You could take up gardening, plant some seeds. You could bake a cake, learn some new recipes. You could maybe try a jigsaw. Do something practical or perhaps something intellectual Let's think about uh, maybe learning a language. I've been learning some sign language thanks to the tip that Julie gave a little while ago. Did you understand that? Uh, Or you could learn an instrument or practice more on an instrument, you know, get moved to a, a better level. Perhaps read a book. Even if you're not a reader, why not sit down and, and get a book uh, and read it? And that's another thing you could do to keep your mind going. And then I was thinking of something physical. Maybe get fit, go out there and try and run 5k or build yourself up slowly. There's lots of programs and things you can download and and consult about that or learn to juggle or, or do something physical. And then last but not least, do something spiritual. Why not try to read your Bible? 
Now, reading the whole Bible from start to finish is very difficult, and you have to. That can be quite uh, a big job. But why not undertake to read one book? Pick a book, maybe one of the books of the New Testament, one of the stories about Jesus and Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Just read those; that they're not very long. Or read the New Testament, or read passages from the Bible, and uh, cultivate a, a life of, of prayer. So there's there's four areas there. There's the the practical, the intellectual, the physical, and the spiritual. My tip would be keep those going, keep those active, and develop those during your period of lockdown. See you all soon. Uh, that was great, Kenneth. Thank you very much. And if anybody else wants to have I feel like a wee doing a news report, you know. Okay. Uh, if, I, if anybody else wants to send in their tip of the week, we would love to have it. Just something that uh, uh, serious, not serious, uh, something you find it, uh, makes it easier to go through all this. Shall we get started? Tip of the week: What to do with hair? What to do with what hair? To do with hair. <laughs> I'm, I'm having problems. Yes. Oh, you haven't? Are you seriously having problems? <laughs> Wait a bit. These are the things I don't, I don't in. notice. I'm not letting you loose with the razor. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Right. We'll get, we'll get stuck in. It's First Peter chapter 3. Um, we're starting on verse 13 on to verse, chapter 4, verse 6. Do you oh. want to read all this? It's long. You, you okay. go for this. Big breath. Who is going to harm you if you're eager to do good? <laughs> dogs, dogs down, down, down there having, having breakfast. Having breakfast. <laughs> These things you don't have to, you know. Right, go, go for it again. again. <laughs> okay. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with a, with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behaviour in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolises baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand, with angels, authorities and powers in submission to him. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans chose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing and detestable idolatry. They are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless wild living and they heap abuse on you. But they will have to give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached even to those who are now dead so that they might be judged according to human standards in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. Okay, thank you very much for reading that. Even with the... <laughs> with the dog. Distraction. Well, it's not always easy to stand up for Jesus when your friends aren't Christians. But Jesus wants us to hang in there with our non-Christian mates while still standing for him. Maybe you will be the person who helps your friends to start following Jesus. So how do you feel about talking to your friends about Jesus? Can you think of a time when you should have said something but you didn't? Maybe a time when uh, jokes were being told that you knew aren't good jokes uh, to be telling uh, or a time when you didn't stand up for what was right when you knew you should amongst your friends? 
Verse 13 to 16 are about being with people who do not believe. It tells us that when we follow the right way, it does not matter what others say. We should continue to be set apart for Christ. I love verse 15. The verse 15 tells us that always be prepared to say something. Uh, it is even underlined in my Bible. Uh, I've had several Bibles. I think it's underlined in all of them. We, uh, uh, we are not to be quiet about our faith. It is not something to hide away. But we should be able to say why we believe and what we believe when uh, people ask us. That, that that would be a good homework, if we did if we did homework. You know? Yeah, if somebody said why, why do, did, you know, because if people ask you, you don't maybe have a good answer, or a, you know, you're thinking off the top of your head and you yeah. can't come up with something like what I did. So yeah, and it's not about attacking people. So we win an argument. It says to do it with uh, gentleness and respect. I want. But I haven't finished. Okay. Okay. But to say this is who we follow and explain who Jesus is and why we follow him. and mm -hmm. so, right. Yeah, I, I remember once years ago, a friend invited me to Queen's Christian Union would meet in, uh, what do you call the place? A student's union at Queen's. And they, they did a sort of a late night evangelism thing where they set up a desk and anybody could come and ask them about Christianity, about God, about the Bible. And did you do that? I, I, I While I was there to watch... But there was one guy came up, and he came up to me, and he going, I'm a Muslim. What are you going to do about that? I said, oh, that's interesting. You know, uh, what, why are you a Muslim? And he thought for a moment, no, I'm just trying to get you riled up. And he walked away. So and he then, wasn't a Muslim? He wasn't. He was just trying to go for an argument and get an uh, argument going. And it worked later on because he came back and there was a guy, one of the Christians at the table, I saw him later on arguing for uh, fiercely with this guy. And the guy was just there to wind him up. And there was no way you can argue somebody into heaven, argue somebody into being a Christian. We can encourage others to ask questions and know that we do not have to have an answer straight away. We are allowed to say, great question. I don't know the answer, but I can try to find out for you. Yeah, and you can even ask us to help you with that. And then we can ask somebody else. And we can ask somebody, that's what we do. <laughs> if you do not know what to say, well, learn a few verses. And not just what the verse says, but what it means. Take verse 18 as a good one to learn. What's verse, 18? verse 18? For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. It tells us that Jesus died for our sins. When we say, shove off God, that's what sin is. Shove off God, I'm in charge, not now. And that is because he is perfect and we are not. And through his death, we can now come to God. And moving on, the last part of verse 21 on into uh, verse 22, which, uh, which tells us that Jesus is at the right hand of God meaning that Jesus has done all his work on earth and is ruling with God, his Father, in heaven. I have a question. And, and well, and he has the power to do all things. What is your question? Who's at the other side? The left-hand side? I wonder. That's a good question. We will find out. Because mm. I don't Somebody know. Somebody tell us the answer. I don't know. Or we could just look it up. Or we could just look it up. You know, Google's a great thing. Is that what you get your answers from? Uh, well, yes, but you have to be very picky who you choose to read. Okay. Choose somebody who is quite, um, you know, sensible. Sensible. Right. In chapter 4, Peter begins by telling us that Jesus understood that grief was built into his purpose in this life. Avoiding suffering was not part of the mission. When we are really obedient to God... We look uh, at our earthly lives by saying, here's your list. Here's my list. Here's your list. Good old Peter. Number one. Is this in this verse? Uh, well, it's on the screen. No, but the answer is... The yes. Um, number one, being done with sin. And number two, living for the will of God, not earthly desires. Yeah. Uh, in verse three, Peter gives us a list. We're not going to go through the list, but the list tells us that the follower, Christ followers, the that their days of living for sensuality, sexual pleasure, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, whatever that is, and worshipping false idols are over. If they had lived such a life, 
those committed to Christ should see it as something in their past and with no place in their future. There are things that non-Christians see as perfectly acceptable, but Christians should avoid. In fact, many of them were done 2,000 years ago. If you cannot tell the difference, you do need to spend more time discovering who God is through your Bible. People may say, see you as different and be surprised about what you do not do and do not join in uh, with. I remember um, people knew I was a Christian when I worked in uh, engineering works, but the fact I wasn't swearing all the time. In verse 4, it says that they may even heap abuse onto you. Doing what is right and doing what is popular are not the same thing. Uh, we have to decide what way we want to live. We want to live the right way or the popular way. The story of the house on the rock and the house on the sand teach us this. It may have been a great house on the sand with all the mod cons, lots of parties, but the house of the house on the rock stood still when the rains and the floods came. Uh, there's, a, there's a great story somebody wrote about that, about the guy in the house on the rock, and he kept hearing the party next door in the house in the sand. And, uh, you know, his house got battered all the time, but the house uh, on the sand was still partying and all until the big storm came. And he had to decide which house he wanted to be in. Anyway, verse 5 and 6 remind us of a time when we all have to give an account of our lives to God. Some hope that they have done enough. They've built up enough points uh, to get to heaven. But they're going to be very disappointed because none of us can be good enough. It's not a matter of us being good enough to get to heaven because none of us can. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans tells us. As for us, we will point to Jesus, who did it all on the cross and say we are his. And these verses encourage us to tell other people about Jesus and how he can save us from uh, all of our sins. These verses are about being persecuted for being a Christian. You may have people laugh at you or make fun of you, but the people Peter was talking to were being killed for what they believed. While some may think that we are being persecuted as Christians in this country, there are people around the world who are being killed, imprisoned, tortured, thrown out of families because they follow the God of the Bible. While you enjoy having a Bible in your hand, in a language you understand well, there are people who have to smuggle Bibles into countries, maybe having to learn a new language to read them. That's like what Kenneth was talking about that day, the Wycliffe Bible. Mm -hmm. They had to write down the language first before they wrote down the yeah. Bible. Um, so do not take your Bible for granted. Uh, there's a story of uh, during the Cold War, of a Russian girl who um, so saw nature and wanted to know more about God, but she had to go to a town 30 miles away to find the Bible. The Bible wasn't in her language, so she had to learn the new language to learn about who God was. Imagine um, having to learn Greek to read the Bible. It's not even Greek. It was probably... No, I know, but any language. Any, any language, yeah. You know. Yeah, Greek's okay. quite... Uh, Let's hard. go for it's, Spanish then. Yeah. I imagine wanting to read the Bible that much. We're so uh, blessed in this country that we have Bibles galore. You probably have quite a few in your house, let alone in your own bookshelf. Um, and it's uh, just interesting that in a, a country where people are persecuted for being Christians, this was in the time when uh, that happened in Russia. Even if we suffer in our faith, Jesus said in John 16, verse 33, and this is one to underline. I'll that, be, I'll be. Okay, you, you John, talk, I'll be. John 16, verse 33. This has to be one of my favorite verses because it tells oh. us about who we are uh, as uh, Christians. Are you getting fast to this? Yeah, it's in red. It's in red because it's the things that Jesus said. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Imagine that. In this world you will have troubles. There's people out there who'll tell you, if you become a Christian, everything's going to be sorted. That's not what Jesus said. He said, you will have troubles. But he also said, take heart, I have overcome the world. Let's pray. 
Dear Lord and Father, we thank you for uh, your loving care on us. We thank you for uh, the things that we do have. We have Bibles. We have people to tell us about you. And we can follow you with other Christians in, in the open. We think about countries where you can't do that, where persecution is not just an inconvenience, but it is a life and death. It is uh, It changes your whole world. Lord, we pray for these uh, Christians in those countries. But Lord, we also pray for our own life, that we will be ready to tell people why we believe. Not because our, our parents did, but because it's something that we believe. Lord, uh, I pray for all the people who are listening and watching this uh, as they continue their, uh, their lives. Um, may you grant us that we'll be able to be back here next week. Amen. That's it. That's, that's uh, it. That, that, that's it. I, I'm, I'm not too bad. I'm wearing a t-shirt and Julie's shorts. all... I'm all wrapped up. <laughs> I'm in shorts because I couldn't be bothered to hug out the trousers. Oh, they're just the shorts you wore all they're week. They're just the shorts I wore all week. Uh, they're sticking to me anyway. Um, lovely. Lovely. So anyway, remember uh, that... Remember to send in your tips. We would love to have some of you. Just a Don't wee have short to be video. videoed. Don't have to. Hey, if you write it down, we'll read it out for you. Uh, we can pretend we're you. <laughs> anyway. Um, what are you going to look like, Cara? Uh, I, <laughs> I, I couldn't possibly look that wonderful. Um, what I'm going to do... What, okay. I enjoyed this in Monday, Tuesday night. It was like, yeah. that's all their houses. It was. It, it was really nice. It was like, come on in, see my dog. Yeah, and see, you know, people had cups of tea, Pringles. It was like a party, only you weren't allowed to eat anything. I know, they didn't share the Pringles. <laughs> Please, next time, send us all some Pringles to yeah, eat. We think, can all eat the same. We can all eat the same. That would be pretty cool. Next time we do it, everyone who's going to join gets sent out something. Okay, you have to tell us your favourite food. Yeah, with, have to tell in, us. In, with, within reason. Within reason. Within mm. reason. Anyway, uh, so uh, stick around for the service at 11 o'clock. Uh, last week it was great to have that. And we will see you next week. So bye. Bye.